the 22nd Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. 46 top-class ocean racers waited for His Excellency the Governor of New South Wales, Sir Roden Cutler, to fire the gun at 11 a.m. on Boxing Day amidst the usual turmoil and confusion of the vast Sydney Harbour spectator fleet. With everything from canoes, surf skis, to ocean-going cruisers and family-packed ferries. Australia's best in blue water yachts and crews, six top-class New Zealand yachts, and the graceful 66-foot cutter Nam Sang from the United States, the biggest yacht in the race. Skippers and crews were tense during the hazardous passage down the harbour through the spectator fleet, and then to the open sea, and 640 miles of tough ocean racing to Hobart. Light nor'easter down the harbour forced the racers to tack, and going was slow, but once at the heads it was spinnakers up and away south. Californian Peggy Slater, sailing Nam Sang, was the first woman to lead a Sydney Hobart fleet through the heads. Nam Sang's crew lost their early lead by fouling up their spinnaker. Despite the harbour chaos, all yachts manoeuvred safely and soon were spread out running down the coast. Fidelis, Belandra, Bacchus D and the other big yachts build up a narrow lead over the rest of the fleet, although the little yachts are going great guns. Revelling in the light running conditions, Fidelis increases her lead. Another of New Zealand's top-class yachts, Satanita, shows her pace. Ron Swanson's Salome, always pressing hard, isn't far behind the leaders. At sunset, the nor'easter begins to fade. The fleet is almost becalmed as the ominous black line squall just before dusk heralds the change to a southerly wind, coming in at over 25 knots. Melandra makes the most of the wind shift and chases the leaders. Six o'clock on the first night out. New Zealander Fidelis leads the American Nam Sang by a narrow margin off Shoalhaven, followed by Belandra, Bacchus D, Shimal, Salacia, Seawind, Franklin, Satanita and Salome. The fleet is still tightly bunched, about 15 miles off Port Kembla, but the strong southerly is expected to scatter the fleet overnight and change the positions dramatically. Dawn and the breeze fades, with New Zealander Karina making the most of it. For the watch on deck, it's a case of trim the gear and make the best of whatever wind there is. Aboard Lorita Maria, refreshments.
it has become a slow, frustrating race. Nearly everybody runs into a calm patch, except for Dalis, who clears away from Bacchus D, who had him astern at first light. The fleet is still bunched, with yachts such as Katrina doing everything to keep moving south. After vainly trying to haul back for Dalis, Nam Sang slipped quietly into a hole in the breeze off Aladaba, and there she stays for some hours. Altair, near the tail end of the fleet, has the same windless trouble as the leaders. As dusk falls, this yacht at least has enough breeze to fill her sails. On the evening of the third day, Fidelis was 55 miles ahead of the rest of the fleet and well into a calm Bass Strait. Behind her came the Queenslander, Mr. Christian, sailing extremely well. Her sister ship, Camelot, second last year, wasn't far astern, and then came Bacchus D and Balandra. Silesia, the Victorian yacht Odin, Karangal, the Tasmanian Hugh and Lass, and the Navy yacht Franklin. The rest of the fleet are in two bunches, the first off Cape Howe and the second group off Tathera Head. The flag on Maya Mai tells the wind story on the start of the fourth day, just as ever. Victorian astrolot wallows. But far behind, New Zealander Karina picks up a light breeze and strains to make up the leeway on the leaders. Ahead of her, Satanita also gets moving. Fidelis is now well down the Tasmanian coast and still holding her private breeze. Franklin, making the most of the light weather. On the morning of the fifth day, the fleet are approaching Cape Forestier off the Tasmanian coast. Way ahead, Fidelis finds her wing troubles. Mr. Christian hangs on tenaciously and looks good for a win at this stage, although at least ten yachts have a chance on handicap. Sydney Sloop Maloe is one of them. At this stage, only the tail enders were carrying much breeze. Hobart prepares her welcome and the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania mans the finishing box. The Dalis will be the first New Zealander to take line honours. She's been sailed hard and well, and deserves her victory. A huge crowd turns out to give Fidelis a rousing Hobart welcome, and the crew responds. Skipper Jim Davern described it as overwhelming and greater than that given to the Esmeralda when she visited Auckland. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at sea, the fleet is spread out from Mariah Island to Eddystone, with Saga still in Bass Strait. Balandra is well ahead of Bacchus D, with Mr. Christian keeping up the pressure. The next group are spread out between Mariah Island and Cape Forestier and includes Huon Lass, Valhalla, Cadence, Maloe, Salome and Tambu. The little American, Waiteri, is wide to seaward. Any one of ten yachts can still take out the race on handicap. Next morning off Tasman Island, ten yachts were in line abreast, a sight never before seen. Derwent, 
The Landra has found some breeze and is working up to the finishing line to be the second yacht to cross. The Landra is a member of the Admiral's Cup team to represent Australia at Cowes later this year. By lunchtime, there are 30 yachts in Storm Bay. The little Cadence and Salome and the Victorian Tambu now come into their own. Oh, where is that wind in Storm Bay? It's an anxious time for skippers and crews. Will the little yachts be able to finish in time to take the race on handicap from Fidelis and Balandra? some breeze at long last. Maybe we'll do it yet. There's only hours to go and time is running out, but we can do it if the wind will only stay. Tarnui moving well up the Derwent. Mr. Christian finishes to take handicap honors in number one division and maybe win overall. still waits for the handicap winners to finish. The Caltex radio relay ship Maya Mai enters the dock. Her job now done, as all the yachts are not far away and within range of Hobart. Ewan Lass, a Tasmanian. She sailed a great race and is well up on handicap. Time is running out for the smaller yachts in Storm Bay, but they can still do it. Tension mounts as yachts enter the Derwent. Aboard Camelot, the crew knows she's got a chance of a place, if they can keep her going. Franklin makes it to the finish. Hey, it's a tension-laden New Year's Eve as Victorian Astrolot enters the dock. Closely followed by Valhalla, who has sailed a good race. Parties at home are forgotten as New Year's Eve revelers crowd the dock to await the outcome of this exciting finish to the 1966 Hobart race. But no, there's a rumor Cadence is in the river and is coming up fast. Yes, it's little 30-foot Cadence, and she's a clear winner on handicap, with Salome second and Tambu third, the first Victorian yacht to gain a place in a Sydney Hobart race. Skipper Jim Mason and his crew are overwhelmed with excitement at their first Hobart win. Cadence is a Carmen-class yacht, designed and built by Sydney boat builder Ron Swanson. She's won just about every other race on the Australian ocean racing calendar, and now her greatest triumph. The Sydney Hobart, 1966.